Hi, folks. I'm Elizabeth Howell at Space.com, and joining me is Colonel Chris Hadfield, retired astronaut and Canadian commander of the International Space Station in 2013. So Chris and I are going to talk about his new book and about Canada and space. But first, let's have a quick space question quiz. And so, Chris, are you playing Starfield right now? And what do you think about it? No, I'm talking to you right now, Elizabeth. Uh, actually, you know, somebody um, made a really cool character based on me for Starfield, which I take as an enormous compliment. But, uh, you know, I'm writing a book every two years right now, and I'm the director of several space companies, and I'm helping run a big international technology incubator. And I just, I haven't found time to play Starfield yet, but I'm honored to be part of it. I'm glad to hear that. And when it's ready... Would you fly on SpaceX Starship to the moon? Yeah, I think there's a, a sort of a misimpression that astronauts fly on spaceships. That's one too many words in a sense. We fly spaceships. And so um, it's not just the ride. Uh, it is the whole process by which we make a spaceship safe and, and make it safer for subsequent crews. So to me, that's been my entire life as a fighter pilot, test pilot, engineer, astronaut is how do you fly spaceships ever better and ever more capably? And so, yeah, I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a consultant to SpaceX and I've been talking to Mark Junkosa, who's the you know, chief integration engineer down there. And I think it's got potential to be a magnificent vehicle. And I'd love to not only uh, you know, be looking at it and thinking about it, and, uh, but also maybe someday to have a chance to fly it as well. So the, the short answer is yes. Absolutely, yes. Okay. And when it's ready, would you um, choose, be able to choose, between SpaceX Dragon or Boeing Starfield to the ISS, or Starliner to the ISS, or is that too hard? Um, I think the best spaceship that exists is the one you're about to go to space on, no matter what. And none of them are guaranteed. It's a dangerous business still flying in space. It's like aviation in 1912. Or, or maybe uh, driving a car in 1905 or, or whatever, a train in 1815. You know, new technologies are dangerous uh, until we've we've wrung out all of the bugs. Um, but uh, I've flown the space shuttle a couple of times. I was the pilot of a Soyuz. I've been to two space stations. And it's the process of learning and training and then making all of those vehicles sing. That's that's the whole great joy of being an astronaut. And yeah, I, I would love to fly. I, I was on board a, a, um, a SpaceX Dragon, an unmanned one that came up and docked to the space station. So I've been inside one on orbit, but I haven't flown either of those yet. But if you're asking, I'd love to. Okay. And then which spacecraft of all time do you think has the best storage for a guitar? <laughs> the storage for a guitar, a uh, space shuttle, just because it had the most room. And a guitar is kind of bulky and empty and, and uh, you know, mostly uh, a place for the sound to resonate. So uh, I think we were really lucky that while the space shuttle was flying in the summer of 2001, uh, the NASA psychologists and the NASA payload engineers found fit to manifest a, a small but excellent guitar, a Larry Vey parlor guitar, a Larry Vey parlor guitar up to the International Space Station. It's been up there since the summer of 01. And pretty much uh, every crew has someone who plays guitar. It gets played all the time. So I'm glad it's there. Okay, thanks for that, Chris. Now let's talk about your newer book, The Defector. And so without getting too heavy into the spoiler territory, territory, can you talk about what you brought to the book based on your time as a pilot with the Royal Canadian Air Force and also, of course, with the United States? Sure. Yeah, I uh, I write thriller fiction, uh, uh, you know, internationally renowned, number one best-selling thriller fiction. I started with uh, the Apollo Murders, which is vaguely in focus over that shoulder, and now the Defector, which is over here. Uh, being uh, an engineer and a combat fighter pilot, I used to intercept Soviet bombers uh, flying into North American airspace, and then becoming a test pilot. Uh, with the U.S. Air Force at Edwards, and then the U.S. Navy at Patuxent River, and then 21 years as an astronaut, it puts me in a unique position on Earth for writing thriller fiction, I think. There's just nobody else doing it who has my background. So, so long as I, I can handle the words okay and write a compelling story, uh, it uh, it really catches the imagination of a lot of audience. And um, 
the Apollo murders was my first. And this one, the defector, is is the next in the series. The Apollo murders is being made into an eight-part television series by uh, Sylvester Stallone's company, Balboa. And this one uh, happens uh, six months later in the fall of 73. And the defector is the story of the top, uh, fastest, highest flying Soviet fighter ever, the MiG-25 defecting with a test pilot at the start of the Yom Kippur War, which is an amazing echo 50 years later now. And then, but then being whisked out to the desert in Nevada at a place called Area 51 that really exists where where the American Air Force uh, takes um, Soviet fighters and has, you know, since the 60s. And then all of the things that happen and then the reveal of the real reason that, that, uh, that the defector defected. So and it's getting great reviews and, and it's a number one bestseller. So uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with the book. And I really enjoyed it too, Chris. So thank you for finding the time to, uh, to write it in between all the other things that you do. Um, so I'm Canadian, you're Canadian. And so I wanted to spend some time also talking about Canada's space program, which has seen so much growth. I mean, we could probably fill hours with this discussion, but I wanted to focus on the four astronauts and begin with the two military astronauts, because that was sort of the focus of um, some recent announcements. And so it's been such an exciting year. Let's start with Colonel Jeremy Hansen. He used to be a fighter pilot. He now will be flying around the moon with Artemis II in 2024. After 15 incredible years really serving Canada's space program on the ground, you know, he was doing uh, training other astronauts, he was designing spacewalks and so many other activities. And so can you talk to me about what Jeremy brings to Artemis II and what this means for Canada? Sure. Jeremy's a really excellent Canadian. He uh, he has a couple of university degrees in physics, and he was a, a top fighter pilot uh, in the Canadian, Royal Canadian Air Force. And um, and he, as you say, he we hired him as an astronaut back in 09, I think. So he has been working every single day all around the world uh, at all of the various places where astronauts work and train and uh, developing his own skills becoming qualified at everything that an astronaut might need to do, and then supporting all other astronauts, working in mission control. He was in charge of uh, new astronaut class training as well, brand new people off the street. And he was experienced and trusted enough to be able to teach a whole new crop of NASA astronauts. And now finally, and I think fittingly, he's assigned not just to a space flight, but to a space flight around the moon with three NASA astronauts. What's really significant about that, Elizabeth, is there have only been 24 human beings in the history of our species. You know, in 300,000 years of Homo sapiens, 24 people have left Earth orbit, and they were all American citizens. The very first time someone will leave Earth orbit who isn't an American is going to be Jeremy Hansen from Ailsa Craig, Ontario. And it's because of his incredible skill set, but also his interpersonal skills, his ability to bring out the best in everybody around him and, and in himself. So I, I uh, and maybe the greatest summary is uh, my wife refers to Jeremy as uh, Chris 2.0, like the upgraded model, which I'm not really sure I'm supposed to take that, but, but I don't disagree. Jeremy's great. <laughs> Uh, we also found out that Colonel Josh Kutrick, who's a test pilot, of course, is going to be flying in a new vehicle to the International Space Station in 2025. And what Josh is going to be doing, as you well know, Chris, is he's going to be one of the first person, first people to use Boeing Starliner after seven years supporting other missions on the ground. And so, Chris, can you tell me how Josh's experience will benefit the crew and what this mission means for Canada as well? Yeah, most people don't know what a test pilot is. But uh, once you're already very experienced and qualified as a pilot, and normally in some of the highest performance airplanes that exist, then there's this big competition and only a few are selected each year to train to become a test pilot. And it's a year of full-time school, seven days a week. It's like a PhD in flying. And uh, it is the most exacting and demanding year I've ever spent. Um, and Josh Kutrick was the top graduate of the uh, U.S. Air Force Test Pilot School, served with distinction as a test pilot. And so those skills are super important when you're flying a new spaceship like Starliner. It's going to have problems, uh, not just while it's flying, but in all of the time of development. And that's 
where the, the flight test team and the, and the test pilot really have to dig in, try and anticipate everything that's gone wrong so far that might go wrong and then be ready for it so that no matter what happens, they can bring it safely back and, and make the vehicle even better next time. So I think it's a, an inspired choice. I'm glad that we chose Josh back uh, seven years ago as one of Canada's new astronauts because his skill set has really um allowed NASA and all the international partners to choose him for this flight. And he's not just flying up to the space station on this new vehicle, but he's going to stay there for six months. So he will not only be a test pilot flying a new vehicle uh, beyond Earth atmosphere into space, but then he's going to be Canada's next astronaut living and working on the International Space Station. Uh, he's supremely capable. I think he has five university degrees, an amazing guy. And uh, and I'm really delighted that he's being trusted with um, with Starliner and everything that's going to happen once they dock. And so am I. And then let's move over to the civilian side of the astronaut corps, the Canadian Space Agency. And so I also really wanted to talk about uh, Jenny Givens because she's a civilian fire scientist, as you know. She's going to be a backup astronaut for Jeremy on the Artemis II mission. And she also has seven years of experience at the CSA. And so what kind of experience is she going to be bringing to the mission that will help? Yeah, Jenny's from Calgary, a PhD a mechanical engineer. And she was, I think she was at Cambridge in England as a, as a professor. And she's like a nationally ranked rugby player. So she's got the real brain. She's got the, the strong and healthy and, uh, and well-tuned body. And when you have all of those attributes um, of, of capability and proven capability, it just sets you up to be to be able to do anything that the space agency assigns to you. And I think it's great that she's been going through all of the basic training. She's fully qualified for space flight. And now she's training as Jeremy's backup with, she's gonna know everything he knows about flying to the moon, going around the moon, coming back. She'll be fully qualified so that uh, when opportunity comes for the next Canadian flight assignment, you know, just, just by sequence of age, but also, uh, you know, complete readiness, she'll be she'll be assigned. But what I'm really hoping and what, what I hope the fates allow is that when the very first Canadian puts on their moon boots and steps down onto the surface of the moon, the first time there's someone with a Canadian flag on their shoulder on the surface of the moon, I think the way the stars are aligning right now, I think there's a really good shot that that'll be a, uh, Jenny Sidey Gibbons, and uh, I can't think of a better Canadian to be doing it. So we're not there yet, but uh, I think her training as the backup to Jeremy now um, really helps set her up for that potential future. And I hope it unfolds that way. And of course, I wanted to talk to you also about David saint jacques the medical doctor who spent uh, something like seven months on the International Space Station back in 2018 and 2019. And so he's in between missions right now. Can you talk a bit about what an astronaut's role is during that time? Yeah, um, most astronauts have a deep um, uh, educational background. David, gosh, he has an advanced engineering degree as well as being um, a medical doctor. Great skills. And, you know, he's a marathon runner and a father of three and a, and a, and a really interesting, thoughtful guy. He's already flown in space for uh, six or seven months, as you say, living on board the space station, doing spacewalks. And so his job is very much in support now. Uh, working in mission control extensively. He's carrying his shift. Uh, he's working at the Canadian Space Agency in Saint-Hubert, just outside of Montreal on a regular basis, supporting a whole bunch of different, largely medical-based, but other projects as well. And, and you never know. I mean, Jenny is the backup to Josh right now, which when I was the backup to Bob Thursk, I used to sort of go, well, I'm the backup, so I'm probably not going to fly, but I'm really one twisted knee away from flying in space. You never know. And so your whole job as an astronaut is to stay ready, stay healthy, stay fit, stay available, stay involved in what's going on and never know what the future will bring. So uh, David has had the great privilege of, of staying in space for a long period already and serving but I'm sure if someone said to him, hey, the way things are rolled out, you got to fly in space again, uh, there'd be a big smile on his face. He's ready. Well, thank you for being available for us, Chris. We really appreciate it. And so clearly that was Chris Hadfield, very long resume, but professional astronaut, professional writer, guitar player, so many other things, test pilot. We really appreciate you being here. And uh, you also can read more about space exploration and all of these astronauts and many more at space.com. Thank you for watching.